Hey everybody, welcome back to Top Dog Tips. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Samantha. This is my Chocolate Lab Sadie. This week I wanted to talk to you guys about how to clean a dog wound. Um, and I'm actually gonna go off a note card, which I don't normally do, um, but there is so much to talk about when talking about cleaning a dog wound. And I just wanna make sure that I cover everything and um, I give you guys all of the information needed. This is something that I'm asked often by a lot of different people. Um, Sometimes, you know, there's people that worry and kind of panic and they're those pet parents who rush their dog to the vet for every little thing. And if you can afford to do that, that's great. But for the most part, most of us live on a budget and, um, you know, taking our dog to the vet for a wound is not always feasible. There are certainly times when you do need to see a vet, um, and I will talk about those as well, but if your dog has um, some kind of a laceration that you can care for at home, you can save yourself a lot of time and a lot of money, um, and you can save your dog a lot of stress too by just doing it yourself. Um, so one thing to uh, to touch on, like I had mentioned, was uh, those times when you when you absolutely need to see a vet. Um, if your dog is bitten by another dog or any, any other animal um, and they have a bite wound, you wanna make sure that you take them to the vet. And that's not necessarily because of the wound, but it's because of the bite and there are certain things that need to be done, um, certain shots they may need to receive and uh, things that the vet needs to check for and, and record and things like that. Um, if your dog is bit by another animal, um, including another dog, and even if it's a dog in your own home, you really want to make sure that any bite wound is seen by a veterinarian. Um, if a wound needs stitches, and of course we're not veterinarians, so we don't know the exact answer to that, but um, if it if it's just the skin, um, normally you can take care of it yourself. If it goes down into your dog's uh, tissue, down into the... Um, meat, I guess, for lack of a better term. If you can see that tissue inside the wound, um, chances are that it's deep enough that it needs stitches, so that should be seen. Um, and then another um, thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about, and I'll get more into this later, but if there's a wound that's really bleeding a lot, um, and it won't, you can't get it to clot, um, and I'll talk about putting pressure on a wound, but if you can't get it to clot after 20 minutes, you want to go see a veterinarian immediately. Um, another time is, is when it's... Um, anywhere on your dog's near your dog's eye you want to have that wound looked at um, even if it's for example Sadie just wants her belly rubbed if it's like over to the side here underneath or up on top even if it doesn't seem like it is affecting the eye at all you still really should have your dog checked out by a veterinarian and the reason for that is because whatever caused the wound um, a tree branch or another dog they got scraped on something whatever that might be um, that could have added debris into their eye. It could have scratched their eye, the actual eyeball, and you can't see that right away. Um, and that's something that in the next few days, you'll notice that the eye is scratched, but it's something that your vet would be able to realize right away. Um, it would save your dog some um, pain, and it would also save you in the long run too. So anything near on or near the eye needs to be looked at by a veterinarian as well. Um, so when you're getting ready to treat a dog wound, um, you really should have two people and if you have a friend or a neighbor or somebody that can come over and help you out, um, that would really be beneficial. And you want to have all your supplies ready before you get your dog ready to treat the wound. And I know sometimes that's hard because they come in from outside and they're bleeding and um, you don't realize it, but if there's somebody else available right away, um, have them sit with your dog and wrap the wound in a, a clean towel um, or a paper towel if you have those available um, and and hold pressure on the wound while you gather the supplies if nobody's around and you think that somebody can come over quickly if you have a neighbor or a friend that you think can come over quickly sit with the dog and put, apply pressure to the wound while you wait for that person to come over and then have them take your place and you can go gather the supplies. If it's just you, it's gonna be a lot harder, um, but just try and keep your dog as calm as possible, get him laying down somewhere, cover the wound, and try and gather the supplies as best you can. What you're gonna to wanna to have is some water-based lubricant. Uh, this isn't a necessity, but it definitely will help you. Um, and water-based lubricant, if you are thinking Vaseline, that's not what you want Vaseline is a petroleum jelly, um, so you want a water-based lubricant, and that's gonna help you when you're trying to clean the hair around the wound, we'll get to that. Um, clippers, I brought mine just so I could show you um, 
Clippers are great if you have them. I know not everybody has them, so if you don't, um, scissors or a razor are good. There's just more of a chance of adding additional injuries to your dog. If you're using scissors or clippers, they can cut his skin. Um, so clippers are the best, but if you don't have clippers, scissors, or a razor, um, you're going to want some clean warm water, some clean towels, probably two or three, um, some antiseptic solution, and um, some antimicrobial ointment. So. Um, there's a few things that you need. It's not a lot. Um, my recommendation to you would be to have a dog first aid kit or a pet first aid kit um, in your home. And uh, if you have it all in like a little baggie all together, then when your dog gets a wound, you can just grab that and go, which is really great. Um, and then of course, like the clippers, you're probably not going to keep in the first aid kit and warm water so you can get that stuff. But um, if you have the uh, antiseptic solution and the antimicrobial ointment um, and the water-based lubricant, all of that stuff that you would need for dog first aid right in. And, um, its own little kit that would be very easy so that's a great thing to have on hand um, so we talked a little bit about applying pressure to stop the bleeding and um, what you would do is just wrap a towel or a paper towel say that there's a cut on your dog's leg um, you'd wrap that there and just hold pressure on it you're not squeezing you're not causing your dog any pain but you're just applying a slight pressure um, just grip that like you would grip a baseball bat or a golf club or a tennis racket something like that apply enough pressure that you're hanging on to it um, but not enough that you're hurting your dog so Apply that pressure, and as I mentioned, if the bleeding doesn't stop within 20 minutes, you need to see a vet immediately, um, and that's something that you would also want a second person to ride with you, somebody to hold and apply pressure on the wound while you drive uh, to the vet, or vice versa, somebody to drive you while you hold the uh, clean towel on there. So let's just say, obviously, if you don't get the bleeding to stop, you're going to be heading to the vet. So let's say you've gotten the bleeding to stop, you're holding it here. Sadie, you are not being a very good patient today. Um, okay, so you're holding it on there, the bleeding stopped, and then what you want to do is, um, if you have a small dog, you want to pick them up and put them on uh, a table or a counter, somewhere that's clean, um, and somewhere that you don't have to be bending over or sitting down next to them. Um, if it's a big dog like Sadie, you want to get down on the floor, or of course, you can see we have a raised dog bed here, so some if you can get them up off the floor, that's great, um, but if you can't, just lay down on the floor with them and get down on their uh, level so that you can be close to them because that's what you're going to need, and if it's a small dog, bring them up to your level because you will uh, need to be close to them. This is when having a second person can come in very handy. You can have somebody sit with the dog, um, try and soothe the dog, and um, you know, try and eat. you might need somebody to restrain your dog if your dog's not really thrilled with what you're doing and moving all around, um, but having a second person come in very handy, so uh, that's a good thing. So let's see, I'll just use this paw, I guess, um, to show you, but if you um, say the wound is right here on their paw, you want to apply some water-based lubricant to uh, the area. You can get it, it's not going to hurt the wound at all, you can get it in the wound and all around the wound. And what that's going to do is when you are shaving uh, the hair away from it, all of that hair is going to kind of um, stick in with the lubricant and not when you're finished, you can wipe the hair away instead of um, it kind of all going everywhere and making a big mess and uh, having more opportunities to get in the wound and things like that. So. Uh, the water-based lubricant. I have these clippers and I actually bought these to keep in my dog first aid kit. These are for babies. They make these um, special clippers for babies that are not as noisy. So um, you can hear them. They're very quiet. Um, CD doesn't seem to have a problem with them. So they're very quiet, which I like. Uh, if you're treating a wound, chances are your dog's already nervous and anxious about it. So uh, having a quiet set of clippers, and they do make uh, pet grooming clippers that are quieter as well. So I would try and look for those if it's something that you want to keep on hand, either for grooming or uh, for wound care. Um, a quiet set of clippers. So you put the water-based lubricant on there. You shave all the hair around the wound. You want to get um, as much of that hair gone as you can. Again, if you're using scissors or a razor, you want to be very, very careful because there is a good chance that you could cut your dog's skin um, and do more harm than good in that case. So be very careful with scissors. Um, you want to cut the hair as close to the skin as you can, but obviously not right to the skin because you run that risk. Um, and a razor just just be very, very careful. Uh, use a clean, disposable razor because you don't want, um, if you shave with shaving cream or um, have any like um, 
any other kind of chemicals or uh, things on products on your razor, you might not see them. They don't rinse off completely and some of that, uh, some of the, the residue from that is still there and if that stuff gets into your dog's wound, it could lead to infection. So you wanna use a clean disposable razor. If you're not going to buy clippers, you don't have clippers, you don't want clippers, whatever the reason is, um, keep a clean disposable razor right in your dog first aid kit and you can use that to clean around wounds when uh, need be. Once you have um, the area shaved and you wipe all of that um, lubricant and all the hair off, uh, then you can rinse it with warm water until all the visible debris, all the hair, everything is gone. So um, use one of those clean cloths that you have and just dip it in the warm water and wipe the... You're not being a good patient. No. And just wipe, continue to wipe with that warm water. Uh, be very gentle because your dog may be in some pain. So um, just wipe all that debris, all the hair, all of that stuff. And then pat it dry. Usually what I like to do is um, just wet like a corner of the cloth and wipe it. And then you can use the other corner of the cloth that's dry to just pat it dry uh, very easily. You don't want to wipe it dry because then you're going to be wiping more things right into the wound. So um, just pat it dry. And then you have the um, antiseptic solution. Now... You want to get a non-stinging antiseptic solution. Peroxide is not um, a good fit in this case because it's going to sting and it's going to irritate your dog. It may uh, make him agitated. It may heighten his anxiety. So you want to find a non-stinging antiseptic solution. And chlorhexidine is um, the one that we keep in our dog first aid kit. It's very cheap. You can find it in any pharmacy or drugstore, um, CVS or Radiant, anything like that has them. So um, you just, you that's what I would recommend. But any kind of non-stinging antiseptic solution will work. Um, I get the 2% too. That's the other thing. Um, there's a 2% and a 4% four or five percent, I think it's four percent. Um, usually I get the two percent just because it's a little bit more gentle and it still gets the job done. So um, that's what I recommend is two percent chlorhexidine. Um, it kills the bacteria and the yeast that could cause skin infections near the wound. So you want to um, apply that non-singing antiseptic solution and you don't need to wipe it off or anything like that. Just kind of drizzle it over the wound, flush it out really well. Um, don't worry about using too much. That's, I always recommend in this case, um, they, I would rather use too much than too little. So you just kind of dump it over there, flush that wound out very nicely. And then you can apply um, the antimicrobial ointment. And I do have some Neosporin here. That's what we keep. Um, we use it on in our dog first aid kit as well as um, on the humans in our family. So uh, Neosporin is a great one, but you can find other ones. Um, oh, Sadie, stay. She's not in the mood to be on camera anymore, I guess. Um, so you can find other ones too. There's store brands and things like that that are a little bit cheaper. And just stick that in your uh, dog first aid kit. So that's a good one. Um, apply the ointment and then if you need to bandage it, um, if you think you can keep your dog from licking at it, then that's great. Um, usually what I recommend is to sit with your dog, just pet them, relax, put on a show or something um, and just chill out for like 15 or 20 minutes so and keep them from licking it for that long. If they go 15 or 20 minutes, that's probably pretty good. Everything's had time to kind of settle in there. Um, if you can't keep your dog from doing it or uh, say it happens first thing in the morning and you need to leave to go to work, um, you can wrap it. You can use clean gauze um, and then if you think your dog's not gonna chew it off, you can just try some uh, medical tape. Make sure you buy the medical tape. They have special medical tape that won't stick to hair. So you want to buy, uh, make sure you buy that so that it doesn't pull all your dog's fur out when you pull it off and cause him some pain. Um, so you can wrap it with gauze and medical tape. Some people do the um, gauze and medical tape and then wrap an ace bandage over it. Um, if your dog's not going to chew, that's great. And if you think you can trust him, then that's awesome. But um, we can't always trust our pets not to chew. And especially when they have a wound, it's that natural reaction to get in there and lick it, clean it out. So um, I recommend an e-collar. That's another thing that you should have in your pet first aid kit and if they have a wound um, like where I was showing you on Sadie, if it was on their paw, chances are you're not going to be able to keep any dog from licking that and getting into it. If it's up on their back or their neck, um, you know, they're not going to be able to lick it. So some it's kind of hit or miss with that in the area that it is if they're going to be able to reach it. Um, if they can reach it and get at it, you probably should not leave them unattended until the wound is healed unless they're wearing an e-collar so that you're sure they're not getting into it. Um, if it's somewhere that they can't reach it, you don't have to worry about the collar. 
I, again, um, e-collars are very cheap. You can get them at any pet store. Some veterinarians will give them away. The one that we actually have, um, they gave us when we had one of our dogs. I can't remember who, but we had one of them spayed, um, and they sent us home with an e-collar, so I just hung on to that one. It's a, just a cheap plastic one, but it works. Uh, you can pick them up. You can pick up comfy ones, ones that are plush. You can pick up... Um, inflatable ones that are like a donut that go around their neck. There's all kinds of different kinds. Check online, check in your pet store. There are tons of different ones if you want your dog to be fashionable or comfortable or uh, whatever the case may be. And like I said, if you don't care, um, you can pick up one of those cheap plastic ones in pet stores, but you can also get them from your vet as well. Um, and if your vet sends your dog home with one for whatever the case may be, just hang on to that and stick it in your, your first aid kit. Um, and then you won't have to buy a separate one. So, um, with the wound, you also want to clean it out two or three times a day, and you want to use those same steps. So go back through. Obviously, you won't have to shave the area around it, but um, dump that antiseptic solution and put the antimicrobial cream on it. Um, after a day or two, once it sort of starts to... to look like it's healing a little bit. Um, you can leave the bandage off if you can get your dog to leave it alone. Um, so clean it for two or three times per day um, for three to five days. If it gets any worse, if it starts getting any worse, whether it's it shouldn't be getting any bigger, but if it if it grows in size, um, if you know if it's a, a deep wound that continues to to split apart, um, obviously that's something you want to have checked out. If it gets more red, if you see any kind of discharge, um, if it's if it's not closing up, you'll notice that it starts to close up. It'll start to scab over, and if it's not doing that within a day or two, you you really need to seek veterinary care and I know we all want to save money but um, you're going to end up paying more in the long run if you wait until your dog gets an infection or um, until the wound splits so wide that it needs stitches or whatever the case may be so um, in this case a preventative measure would be um, give it a day or two the first day it might seem to to look worse and I don't know if it's kind of a mind over matter thing um, or if it's just that it sort of tends to look a little bit more red kind of towards the end of that first day but after the second day into the third day it should start looking better and if it's not schedule an appointment with your veterinarian um, so this was my tutorial or my how-to video I guess on uh, how to clean a dog wound if you have any questions or um, anything else that I can help you with feel free to reach out and contact me you can find my contact information on our website, which is topdogtips.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram. Um, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, you can subscribe to that. You can also subscribe to our newsletter through our website, and um, that'll keep you up to date. You'll get notifications of all my new videos. I post how-to videos and product reviews, comparisons. We do a giveaway every two weeks, and I post recipes, too, for homemade dog food and treats. So if you want um, all of that information, send right to your inbox. You can subscribe to our newsletter or um, of course follow us on social media you'll stay up to date with all that stuff so if you guys have any questions again don't hesitate to reach out to me and I will see you next time with another beneficial how-to video thanks guys have a great day